Welcome back to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. We're here for the 27th staging of the World Badminton Championships. 45 years after the first in Malmo in 1977. So it's third round action today. That's what's already happened here on court number one. And our next match is men's singles and it features the Olympic champion, Victor Axelsson. He's also a former world champion and he's up against Sitikom Tamasin of Thailand. Well, this is obviously the top quarter of the draw and uh, we can see that Chou Tien Chen is already through to the quarter-final stage, as is Jonathan Christie. Uh, Chou Tien Chen has uh, never medalled in World Championships, so I think this is possibly his fifth quarter-final at this particular event. So four courts in action. And Victor Axelsson, the number one seed in his seventh world championship. Twice a medalist, up against Citicom Tamasin. So as far as Tamasin is concerned, it's only his second world championships. His first was in Welva last December, when he lost in the very first round to Chu Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei. The man that we've just seen is already through to the quarter-final stage. But he's had a great tournament so far. And Victor Axelsson, happy to be back here in Tokyo. Not the same venue where he won his Olympic gold medal, uh, but be happy to be back in this city. He was tweeting that fact the other day. And the toss of the coin, perhaps important toss of the coin. It's the fourth meeting between these two players, and Victor Axelsson has won all three previous and all three previous matches in two straight games. The last time was the quarterfinal of the All England Championships last year, 21-4, 21-15 in 34 minutes. So quickly, Steen, did you see who won the toss of the coin there? Of course. Yep. Thomasin won the uh, coin toss and he elected to uh, start on the near side of the court here, which um, then fits both players because there's no doubt that Axelson would have chosen the far side had he won it. Interesting. So, Victor Axelson, 28 years of age, tall man, 194, about six foot four, and he's current world number one. In fact, this is his 90th week in total as world number one, his third spell. Olympic champion, former world champion, European champion. And looking at his results so far here in Tokyo, well, in the first round, he beat the 2018 bronze medalist, Liu Darren of Malaysia, then meet Mark Kalyo of the Netherlands, both of his matches in two straight games. So he wasn't altogether happy with his form against Kalyo, but it was still a convincing win. Sitikom Tamasin is 27 years of age, born in the Thai capital of Bangkok. 180 is uh, 5 foot 11. 33 on the world rankings at the moment, has been as high as 21, a total of 10 weeks across two different spells. And as I was telling you, this is his second world championship. And these two matches are the first matches that he's won in World Championship. And look at the first round. That was against the number 13 seed. Kanta Suniyama uh, came from a game down and an hour and 16 minutes to win at that one against the seeded Japanese player. Then beat Eng Si Yong, the Commonwealth Games silver medalist. Dropped the second game in that one against the Malaysian. But another long match, an hour and 10 minutes. Ready to play. Well, he seems to have been a bit of a late developer, Thomasin. 
I think he must have had a bit of an injury problem because he played no tournaments back in 2016. Do you know more about that, Steen? I don't know more, but um, that seems like a plausible cause. Maybe he's, I don't know, maybe he's done military service or something like that. We see that with some of the Korean players. Yeah. Well, Jana is our umpire for this one. And Trish Gubb from New Zealand is the service judge. And on second thoughts, I'm actually not sure Axelson would have chosen the far side of the court. Ladies well, and I was quite surprised when you said that. On my right, Victor Axelson, Denmark. So the former world champion, the current Olympic champion, Victor Axelsson, getting this third round men's, double, men's singles underway. No, going back to your point about not sure whether Axelson would have chosen that far end of the court, I think he usually starts uh, hitting with the drift so that the second game he's got the better end. He likes hitting against the drift. So, yeah. Two, love. We look at the One. Danish coaching then. Uh, he was saying in his media interviews after his match against Mark Calio, he said um, it, it wasn't his day. He, he wasn't particularly happy with his form. Um, <laughs> both yes and no. I mean, the first match against uh, Darren Liu was a tough match. And when you play Darren Liu, you never get into any real rhythm of the game. Axelsen won as he's done uh, ever since I lost 10 years ago. But but you don't get that feeling that everything is just um, coming together. And I don't think he got that in the first game against Kaljo either. And then he said that I was too harsh on my own self-evaluation. Um, you also have to remember that when you start on, on the, uh, the far side of the or the, the, the bad side of the court, then you have to realize that you might be in trouble in the first game more than you like. And Axelson has had a couple of tournaments where, where he's won comfortably. Oftentimes yeah. the players have uh, not been able to get to two figures in, in both games. So, um, yeah. And, and there's other times he would have been happy about two straight game wins, and that was also the conclusion he came to. Yeah. has had a scintillating year so far as Victor Axelsson. Five titles from eight tournaments. Now, this is going to confuse some people because coming into this match, his win-loss record for the year is 36-1. and one. Uh, But two of his uh, tournaments he pulled out before uh, he had played a second-round match. So he's actually only had one loss this year. And 36 wins, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? But it does put an extra burden of expectation. Everybody's saying Victor Axelson's going to win this uh, tournament. It's the overwhelming favourite. And, and so far, the play has not been 
nearly as good as it uh, looked in, um, in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. But like he also um, concluded, I'm, I'm actually fine. I've played two matches and um, yeah. things are going well. And I think the important thing is that you play the next day in the tournament and then it doesn't really matter if you've um, sort of uh, scraped through to the quarterfinal or semifinals as long as you play well in the weekend. Yeah. And I think that was pretty much the way it went when he won his World Championship title back in um, 2017 in, in Glasgow. He'd managed to uh, get himself to the semi-final and secure a medal, and then suddenly he totally um, wiped out Chen Long in the semi-final. Yeah. Nine and ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good attempt to get that back. And I think also there's some kind of pride in it. He, he lost the first round in, um, in January in Puebla, 2021. Uh, so, so he doesn't want to go out early again. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's just my perception. I, but I think he has a list of um, players in his head where he says, "Okay, if if I have to lose in this tournament, it, it can be to one of those here. But the other ones, that that's my my, um, my bottom level should be high." Yeah. It should be pointed out that, of course, he lost in the first round in Welver to the man who went on to take the gold medal, Lokin Yu of Singapore. Oh, my goodness gracious, that's an unusual error from Axelson. Service over. Five. Off. Well, only one player from Thailand has ever won a medal in men's singles. At the World Championships, and that was Gantapong Wanchalon. Good smash. In Basel, 2019. It's a very good smash, wasn't yeah. it? I didn't like the return. It was readable all the way, the forehand return from Axelson. Wait! Service over. Six off. Oh, that's wow. a beauty. Right into the corner. But also the amount of power that he uses and it Six. still stays in. Yeah. That is. Uh, that's extraordinary. So maybe the drift is, I've completely misread it, and maybe the drift is back as it was earlier. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty certain that the overall general drift is as we've discussed, but yeah. then at, at times there can come fluctuations in it so that it's definitely possible to lift it out in the back end of uh, Tamazin right, right now. That's two in a row hit long. Tie player. Nine, six. Three in a row. And it's much better play from Axis than with these flat lifts to the back end corners Ten, or to the back six. court corners. That's the way to uh, do it if you play up against the drift. Step forward in the stands, trying to control the front court. Oh, that's a beautiful smash. Now, seven, the run of points to an end, but it had been five straight points.
Oh. So to the mid-game in so with a four-point advantage, 11, Victor Axelson. Got one twenty seconds. Got one twenty seconds. Well, sadly, we couldn't hear anything that was being said there from Coach Thomas Stangle. Hope you were able to hear at home. 11-7. Well, we can't give a translation Wait. then, can we, Steen? No. <laughs> so just give me your interpretation of, of what's happened so far. Victor should be pretty happy with seven. the way he's settled, do you think? Um, I think he should be. I'm, I'm not sure he is uh, because it, things didn't work out from the beginning. Uh, but now it's starting to uh, come together. He's been, um, he's been um, suffering some uh, point losses in his defense. Uh, a little bit accurate with his um, attacks in the beginning of the game, and uh, <laughs> that's that's going to be something that he says uh, uh, needs to start a little bit more convincing and uh, a little bit better and so on. Uh, Right now it starts to uh, yeah. to look good. Yeah, and beginning to dominate. Seven. Take control of the match. And already the signs to me that Tamison doesn't really have the game plan or ideas to know what to do to counteract this. He's not the only player in World Badminton, I can assure you. No, but in the beginning of the match, he got too many free chances. Uh, Victor played a little bit too passive to the backcourt. There's still some situations where he does it, in my opinion, in the service returns. We've seen it a couple of times. And um, yeah, it's just this, don't, don't lift even if you can lift, because the others will take the chance and take advantage of it. Go on the attack. Shot. No, it's not often you see Nine, Victor Axelson leading by the punch clear. No, you've got to have the right height on, Absolutely. The, on the trajectory. And it looks a lot like his attacking shot. It looks like his attacking shot as well. Thomas in sort of quite efficient. That's all. A bit of his match against the Mm, another one's landed in. 10, 16. Oh, oh. Uh, we're 
Although, so you know, Steen, uh, I can forgive er errors like that because he's got better. to go for the acute angle. Yeah. But but he's also hit through Axelsen's defense a couple of times, so um, so I think he should take courage in that, um, Tamasin. And I actually think that he's going to face problems of similar size when uh, they change ends because uh, then Axelsen plays with the drift. Challenge. And I have a feeling that uh, this um, feeling that Axelsen's got, that it's not really rolling like Indonesia and uh, Malaysia, is due to the fact you have to apply a bit more power here. Yeah. Because it's t um, slower playing conditions. So it's easy to tense up a little bit. It's not so relaxed. Yeah, that was very wide. Challenge now successful. One challenge remaining. But when you play with the drift, you can relax. 11, 18. At least in your downward attacking shots. Super angle. One of his speciality shots. Look how he just reaches up to take it as early as he can. A little bit of luck. Service over. Mr. Thirteen, nineteen. Certainly didn't have the right trajectory. Two flats in the tall lane, able to intercept and play the winner. So it'll be seven game point opportunities. Thank you. Strings gone? No, it's okay. Five the boxes. Fifteen. Well, still another five game point opportunities, but nothing should be taken for granted. We saw an extraordinary match earlier today on one of the adjoining courts when Carolina Marin was four match points down against Herbing Jiao and came back to win it. That was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. And you got it to work for every point. Just because you're on game point opportunities, you still got to work just as hard. I think Herbing Jiao actually got terribly nervous. You weren't. I know you were commentating on court number uh, one just, when uh, it was happening. No, just out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. Hey. 
It's a positive win for Lorin. Oh, that's a great play. Yeah, lovely. 16 20. So, three game points have come and gone. And Axelson walks around like he's steaming inside. This, like you mentioned, Jill, that he is the huge favourite um, to win this, and it's 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 not so easy to be the favourite. No, and it just um, shows how uh, well Thank Lindan Kintomomota handled it when uh, and Li Chong Wei and Li Chong Wei in all the tournaments. Yeah, incredible Super Series record, Li Chong Wei. Um, yeah, Lin down in World Championship seven finals. Get ready. So, fifth game point opportunity for Axelson. Oh, this is extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely 20. extraordinary. This is the first time this year we've seen Axelson like this. Tensed up and... Tensed up. Nervous. Game not working, no rhythm. Fantastic action there. That's amazing. 19-20. Six. Game points have been saved, but one more remains for the former champion, Victor Axelson. Game point opportunity. The number one seed and former champion. Victor Axelson takes the opening game 21 19. 21 minutes for that opening game. Oh, my goodness, he had to work hard for it in the end. Seven game point opportunities converted on his sevens. So the players return to court for the start of this second game. And Victor Axelson okay. still doing some stretching. He was stretching during the two-minute timeout. Very sadly, we're not getting any 
sound from the coaches. Today, Steve, we couldn't hear a thing. Play. But I would think Thomas Sterngort, psychological coaching more than tactical coaching, would you think? Because, I mean, he, he's yes, so much nervous. more psychological. Yeah. Um, one of the things you can sort of um, get trapped in is that uh, he was in trouble, but he got the first game, so now things will ease off. They are not, you can see that. Well. So, so you've got to come up with a, uh, a some support that's a little bit more simple yeah. than normal. Yeah, and no. then if you have some things that you know is something that you discussed earlier on, some trigger words or, or something, that's Thank you. A, this is what we need to focus on. Yeah, there's a sign of support for Axelson in the spectator stand. Didn't manage to read it except for the name and the flag. Well, he was lucky he didn't twist an ankle there. He was terribly off balance in that last rally. So he lunged forward. I think it's about <clears throat> saying something. I mean, Three, he, he can uh, he can tell him off a little bit here in between the first and the second game. And say, hey, now come on now, now we need to focus. This is still going to be really really tough. Um, Seven, and uh, if we think we are one, even halfway three. home, that's a wrong assumption in my opinion. Um, so that means that. Um, we haven't got our A game today, perhaps even not our B game. So we got to win with the C game so we can come back tomorrow. That means that we are happy with every single point yes. we get. No yeah. matter how we score it. Yeah. We accept all the gifts that's there for us. And we also know that there's going to be rallies that we're unsatisfied with. We can't sort of hit ourselves in the head with it because we're going to need everything we can get out of um, the body today. Oh, yeah, that's quick forward from City from Thomason. And right now, I think basically momentum is with Thomason. couldn't see, I mean, when he points at the line, his, his uh, body might uh, block um, his arm, but um, I didn't think he moved. I didn't think he made a call. Well, he's won the point anyway. Oh, that's a good smash. Yeah. Sometimes I think the more nervous Axelson is, the more fidgety he is. Yeah. Touches his shirt and it's not like Nadal. It's not, <laughs> that, it's not that extent, but he is deaf. If he's nervous, he's a little more fidgety. That's a good smash. So, that wasn't a particularly good smash, it's still scored upon. Look at the placement, it's in the middle of the court. It's uh, easy within reach from Tamasin, for Tamasin, but um, 
to the point for Axelson. But he cannot let go. If he shows signs of that, then Stonewall has to be at him immediately. Now that was a good smash. That was a good smash. Seven, two. to put pressure on since 2-3. No. Thomas in. And that's also sometimes, sometimes you get, sometimes you just prove yourself. In terms of thinking your opponent is hitting everything. Well, I think so Thomas has probably his Three. best results. Eight of his career so far was winning the Macau Open, which was a Super 300 event in 2019, losing Xi in the final. Was that the uh, comeback tournament of Xi Yuqi after he uh, rolled his ankle against Antonsen? Mm, it may have been. Yeah. Game interval with a seven point advantage. And that smash down the line was all about placement to set himself up for the follow up. Lovely play from Axelson. Again, and 11 4 in the second. <laughs> Got one twenty seconds. Got one twenty seconds. Anything you think that Thomason could do to try and turn this around? I think he needs to try and take more initiative uh, because if Axelsen gets to play from uh, high above the tape uh, overhead shots, then there's only so many. I mean, if he gets a lot of chances, then eventually he won't make that many mistakes. Play. So so he's got to look for the opportunities to put pressure on uh, the Dane and attack here. Uh, 
played Rally, but um, he was relying on the error from Axis and there. He, after the, he chose a drop shot early on instead of a smash, he didn't have any more chances in that rally to um, to attack. I would definitely uh, play a lot to the backhand side of Axis and because that's we know that's the side that tenses up first. The arm not really uh, being relaxed enough. There's the backhand smash. I think he really needed to move his feet. Thank you. Good. Victor Gazazan Teladesh call in. That's well in. That's a lovely shot. Well, well maybe he is trying to take more initiative, as you suggested he should. Yeah, that's a nice rally from Thomason. Yeah, at least, at least play downward shots. When the uh, possibility is there. Eight, thirteen. And total information born Thailand coach. It's missed it. There was an open court. Nine thirteen. And I think that's the sideways drift making the difference on this shot. Thomason, on his hand yesterday against Hong Su Young, he had a 14 5 lead in the third game and got um, caught up at 19 all before he eventually won it. Wow. So uh, he knows that um, it's not a good idea to give up too early. Or take the foot off the pedal too early. Push 
pushed it long. Five straight points. And all of a sudden, it's more than believable again. Uh, to the back line at the moment, uh, Thomas in. challenging that if he's wrong he's got no challenges left it was called in no oh, he's withdrawn his challenge can you do that no, it's clearly in he obviously has withdrawn his challenge and this is actually an issue steam because if players don't challenge immediately, then they're told that it's too late. Yeah. Uh, but, but if they can withdraw it, then yeah. then that rule sort of nullifies. Exactly. But you've got to have a moment to, you know, I'm not talking more than a couple of seconds, but you, you've got to have a moment to be able to think, oh, I want to challenge that. As long as you're certain it's not influenced from others. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's gone well. Right. Yeah. And that um, forehand corner there. Seems like he is not as quick on that as um, he needs to be. Yeah, uh, it's a nice 
nice punch for the net shot from Axelson. His net play hasn't, he has really hasn't found his touch on the net shots to date. No. And he uses that so much to build his game around to force the short lifts and then using his good attacking play. Points away from the quarter final now for Axelson. Opportunities for the Olympic champion, Victor Axelson. After 45 minutes of play, mind you, he was 2013 up in the you. opening game and it went to 2019. So we shouldn't think this is over quite yet. Challenge here from Thomas. I think it was probably just long. And this is always a bit of an anti climax if a match ends on an incorrect challenge. Thomas in. What about this? When he's when he's been game points down, when he, first in the yeah, opening like, game sorry. and now in the second match points down. It's like he's loosened up. Yeah, and starts attacking. Thank you. Hey, go. Two match whoa. points have come whoa. and gone. third match point opportunity. The former champion, Victor Axelson, safely through to the quarter-final stage. 21-19, 21-16. Here in the match lasting 48 minutes. Well, he will be relieved to get through that. Work to be done. So on sharpening up his game. But as you were saying, Steen, 
if you're not playing at your best, if you need your B game or even C game, and you can still win when not at your best, it shows what a class athlete you are. Confirmation of the score, 21-19, 21-16 in 48 minutes. Also credits to Thomas in for pushing access. And Absolutely. So they take leave of centre stage, and Victor Axelson in the fourth final will play against either the number six seed, Anthony Ginting, the Olympic bronze medalist, or the 2018 silver medalist, Shi Inchi. But coming up next, it's women's doubles. It's the All England champions, Matsuyama and Shida, up against the Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Tan and Laura Litharan. <laughs> 